Hi, welcome to building enterprise applications on App Engine. I know it's a session getting late in the day, and there's been a lot of excitement today. But um, we have a, um, a number of things we're excited to talk about, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll be able to to even in the late afternoon keep your attention. Um, so building enterprise applications on App Engine, specifically what we're going to be talking about today is um, why this year is becoming um, the best time to build to build enterprise applications on App Engine. Um, my name is Greg D'Alessander. I'm a senior product manager on Google App Engine. And my name is Chris Schalk. I'm a developer advocate on Google App Engine. Let me put it, I get over there. And uh, so just to get started, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information. Um, there's my Twitter handle, so feel free to, you can follow. Uh, and then of course- I still use email. Yeah. I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> yeah, so feel free to shoot them some email. And uh, if you're ever, if you're a little bit confused where you're at, we have this handy uh, session short link. You can click on that. That actually tells you you are here watching our show. Um, we have our hashtags as well, and of course the session feedback. So, cool. I guess we'll jump right into our presentation. Um, so mainly, the presentation today that we've put together is essentially the high level is we're, we're wanting to convey the trajectory of App Engine, where it is today, and how it's essentially heading in an enterprise direction. So to do that, what we're doing is I'm going to go ahead and give you through, uh, step you through a brief history of, of App Engine. So how many people here are currently using App Engine today? Cool. And how many people are not using App Engine yet, but are still looking at it? Okay, good. So we definitely want to speak to you guys as well. And if you guys are uh, from the enterprise, how many enterprise would you consider yourself enterprise developers? Okay, exactly. So I think we got a good crowd here, at least for the stuff that we're going to try to cover. So anyway, for folks who are not familiar with the history, I'm going to give you some history. I'm also going to hand it over to Greg so he can actually get into a little bit more detail on what we are announcing today. You may have actually seen uh, something uh, on our blog, but uh, we'll, we'll be getting into more specifics about that. Um, I'm going to also talk about the App Engine for Business uh, uh, technology that we announced last year and explain essentially what we learned from that whole program and, and how it actually pulled us to where we are here today. Um, and then finally, we have some key partners that we're going to invite up on stage, and they're going to give us a little bit of like their experience with App Engine and also the overall um, what their experiences were, especially for App Engine for Business and so forth. And that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's look back a few years, a, a long time ago, just three years ago, actually, uh, when we launched App Engine. So we literally just passed our three-year uh, birthday. Um, but so it's relatively young, but um, as you can see in a lot of these different features, we've been continuously uh, putting out some really excellent features and getting a lot of great feedback. So I kind of like to summarize like our last three years as obviously 2008 was a, the major milestone was actually launching App Engine. Um, and then moving on to 2009, we had uh, a general over, uh, overall platform expansion, especially with the launching of the Java runtime. Uh, how many people here? On, I think I got a pretty good idea. But anyway, for folks coming from the enterprise, Java is obviously key. And uh, I actually come from Java and enterprise as well. So uh, that was also when I uh, came into the App Engine team. And so that was obviously extremely important as well. And then, of course, moving on into uh, 2010, uh, we had a series of limitations removed, essentially making the overall platform uh, more user-friendly, more um, adaptable and pluggable into a lot of different technologies, and essentially more liberal, I guess, in, in that way. Um, Ten-minute tasks, for example, that's obviously a great improvement for people who, who are having to do like long-running tasks. Uh, channel API, even for doing some cool Comet type of uh, interaction with browsers. And of course, 2011, uh, we have the high rec replication data store, which we launched, and we're getting extremely positive feedback so far. Uh, so positive that we actually have an announcement that we'll be talking about later today. We even have one of our partners that was one of our uh, key partners in helping us uh, with the you know, early adoption of a high, uh, high replication data store. And of course, today, we also introduced some really cool features. So in the current version of 1.5.0, uh, we have this new technology called backends. And uh, if you can go back in time, and there was a talk about two hours ago on backends. That's right. So, <laughs> so exactly. Um, 
backends, if, you, if you're just learning about it today, if you ever wanted to run like a continuous process, have like say a search engine, uh, or just essentially any kind of like a daemon process, that is what you get with backends. So, so definitely some cool technology. Uh, pull queues is also another technology that we've uh, introduced today with the latest version. So uh, you can essentially string up a series of tasks and line them up and let them execute. And they will execute essentially you know, as they're ready to be uh, executed. Uh, and then of course, the big change that we're introducing today is high replication data store it is actually becoming the default uh, technology. And this is coming as a result of an abundance of empirical uh, information on all of our trusted testers out there, uh, even our own uh, work with the technology is just really proving to be a, a highly reliable uh, architecture for data storage. And then before we kind of jump in a little bit more on some like overall metrics uh, that Greg's gonna jump into, I, I always like to pull up a slide just to kind of give you a general feel for our overall partners. And in, especially in this context, you may not see a bunch of enterprise uh, companies, but we actually partner with a lot of companies who are directly relating with enterprise companies. Uh, I mean, sure, there are some enterprise companies there like Best Buy and, and some of the guys where we actually interface with them quite a bit where they may not run their entire infrastructure on App Engine today, but they are now experimenting and taking core co components of their overall architectural um, uh, enterprise architecture and pulling in and replacing it with App Engine components. In that sense, we find App Engine extremely pluggable technology in larger heterogeneous types of uh, enterprise architectures. Um, but yes, we, you can see from, from our partners that we have more of our also traditional partners that came when we launched. So social, uh, gaming, mobile, all that kind of stuff. And all those guys are still quite happy and continuing to crank out some really cool stuff. Okay. So let me hand it over to uh, Greg. Going to talk a little bit about our growth and, and, uh, and where we are today. So as you can imagine, with all of the things that um, Chris was just talking about that we've been doing over the years, um, a number of people have uh, decided they wanted to use App Engine. And this, uh, this curve is exactly the kind of thing we love to see. Um, as of today, there are over 100,000 active developers every month using App Engine. Um, there's over 200,000 active applications every week. Now, when we say active applications, we don't just mean somebody built a Hello World app to see how it was and, and, and count that as an application. We actually mean 200,000 applications that are serving traffic every week. We also serve um, over 1.5 billion page views per day. Um, to give you a sense and a scale of this. Can I repeat uh, something real quickly? Of course. Per day. So, yeah, sorry, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> um, to, to give you a scale of, uh, of, of how quickly we've been growing, I believe last year at I.O. we announced half a billion page views per day, or over half a billion page views per day. Um, then in December, we started talking about we were over a billion page views per day. And now in May, we're it is May, yes. Uh, now in May, we're over a billion and a half. So that's the, that's the, tra the, the growth trajectory that uh, App Engine has been on. Um, also wanted to call out a, um, a specific, uh, well, a specific wedding that happened recently. Um, but, uh, but more specifically, uh, App Engine um, served a few apps for uh, the official royal wedding. Um, and we, 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 uh, we were excited about doing it um, primarily because it really showed um, the kind of traffic that App Engine can serve in a really short amount of time. Um, on wedding day, uh, we served up to um, 32,000 requests per second on one of the apps that we were using. Um, the, uh, sorry, one of the apps that we were running. Um, 37.7 million page views, 13.7 million visitors. And the best part of all of this is this ran um, without us having to build a completely new stack for them or to, to go totally out of our way to make this p practical and feasible, this ran on, on the same infrastructure um, that is shared between all App Engine apps. And hopefully no one saw anything really slow during that. <laughs> yeah, and I think the, the main thing there is like, sure, these are just numbers, but you know, in an enterprise context, you know, enterprises can actually feel secure that they have a truly scalable to massive numbers, both in traffic as well as daily requests and stuff like that. So. Exactly. Um, and so, you know, that, that's all great. So we, we've been through, we've had a few years um, that we've been going through of, of building out feature set, um, gaining traction, getting a lot of traffic. Um, what this all leads us up to today is that App Engine is actually going to be leaving preview later this year. 
Um, leaving preview is a massive step for us because it's essentially saying that Google is completely behind App Engine, that they feel it's a, it's a product that we want moving forward. Um, drilling down into some of the details around this, um, leaving preview means a full Google product. This includes three-year deprecation support. So when we talk about de deprecation support, what we essentially mean is that even if we um, decide that we're no longer going to um, continue development on one of our APIs or even App Engine as a whole, we'll still continue to support it and run it for three years down the road. Right. And I know it's a little weird to talk about, um, I know it's a little weird to talk about uh, deprecation right when we're about to launch a product, but we also know that one of the main things that enterprises and businesses worry about is that is that they, they don't want to be betting on a platform, be building on top of a platform, and worry that it might just disappear tomorrow. That kind of reminds me. What product did you work on previously? Uh, Google Wave. Oh. Why do you ask? Oh, OK. Now I ask. Just um, yeah. and, and anyway, um, so, so we, we know that this is a concern. And this is why we think it's so important um, that we come out of preview and, and become a full Google product. Um, so this, um, when we come out of preview, this will also be, include a 99.95% SLA um, for all paid users. Um, uh, Chris will talk a little bit more about this, but last year we were, when we talked about App Engine for Business, we said that um, there's going to be an SLA with App Engine for Business. When it came down to it, we just realized all paid users should get an SLA. Operational develop and developer support available. Um, a new business-friendly terms of service, billing via invoice, the kinds of things that you would expect coming from a business. Um, rounded out feature set, including front-end and back-end capabilities, and a new sustainable pricing model. So um, just to dive a little bit more into the SLA, um, when we talk about an SLA, it's important to us um, to, to really be as transparent as possible about what we're trying to measure. So for instance, um, uh, well, and I guess in, for the sake of transparency, the SLA is only going to cover high replication data store applications. Um, we, uh, we, high replication data store, um, as Chris mentioned, is now the default for all applications today, and we know we can count on it. Um, but high replication uh, data store, and I'm going to start saying HRD. Yeah, um, I like HRD that. does not need. Dan started us on that, so yeah, we're exactly. good with it. Might as so. well move to it. <laughs> um, so it doesn't need planned downtime. So when we talk about an SLA, we're not saying this is the SLA outside of the planned downtimes you're obviously going to have to absorb anyway. Um, uptime is going to be measured by uh, thousands of various probes from around the globe. So it's not just us saying, well, within our data center you, um, that we're looking at, everything looks fine. Um, we're also um, working on a way to give customers a way to contribute their metrics back to us. So that it's not just us monitoring ourselves, but essentially all of the applications that you're running are also monitoring our service and then feeding that data back to us. Um, last thing I, I wanted to mention about this is um, there is an upcoming uh, monitoring API that uh, we're actually going into Trusted Tester um, as of today uh, to automatically monitor your own applications. Um, so this is really, um, we, we understand that what businesses need and what enterprises need is, is more transparency into what their application is doing, being able to, to monitor that, um, and being able to trust that it's, that it's actually going to be staying up. Um, there are two sessions that I want to highlight uh, if you're interested in learning more about this. Um, more nines, please, is uh, the, both these sessions are tomorrow. Uh, no time, time travel needed. Um, more nines, please, and life in App Engine production are two sessions that will help you understand both how we run things on the back end, as well as um, how the high replication data store works, so that when we say that we're giving uh, three and a half nines as, a, as an SLA for it, why we can be confident in that number. All right, front ends and back ends. So we talked about, as we leave preview, um, front end and back ends were, are, are an integral part of this. Um, this is because the, um, over the years, all of the feedback that we've gotten in terms of uh, both the way um, code runs and the way we bill for that code um, essentially has been leading us up to a point of we actually need to have a better sense of both CPU and memory that applications are using. Um, so what we're doing is front ends and back ends have instances. This is, um, this is essentially the running unit. It's a set amount of CPU and memory. It's what runs your code. Um, if you're already an App, end user, you, App Engine user, you're probably um, accustomed to this. If you're running Java, it's basically a JVM running your code. Um, so front ends use these instances, but they scale them dynamically based on traffic. 
The App Engine scheduler determines when to spin up and, and down um, front end instances based on your traffic. There's an algorithm that, um, that we t t spoke of earlier in a session earlier today um, about how to scale your application that it, it, essentially the algorithm we use has something to do with the latency of your application and the number of, and, and essentially the, uh, the, the latency of requests coming in. Um, one of the things we are going to be doing, because we know that instances are, are a really important concept, um, we're going to be putting some controls in place to allow customers to optimize the scheduler for their particular usage. So for instance, um, if, you, if you'd rather uh, tailor your instance usage uh, so that it spins up instances very quickly because you always want really snappy response, you'll be able to do that. Uh, so, um, then there's backends. Backends are launching today with 1.5.0, as we, as we briefly discussed. Um, the main difference is they run based on admin control. So um, admins can start them, stop them. Uh, they can set them to be dynamically started um, when, uh, when, when requests come in. The other thing you can do with backends is choose CPU and memory size. Um, this, again, is really important if, um, if you're trying to run something that is very memory intensive. Um, and they're all also long-running long processes. So that's essentially the, the upshot of front ends and back ends. Um, all right, so new pricing model overview. Now I know this is actually a really important and really impactful aspect of leaving preview. Um, essentially, again, taking the feedback we had from, um, from the three years we've been running App Engine, uh, there's a couple big, pretty big changes we made. One is in usage types. So today we have free apps that you can run forever um, to, uh, to try out App Engine, to see how it runs, even to have a couple apps. I know people who run their websites and things like that on it. Um, we feel that's really, really important and critical uh, to allow people to try out App Engine and use it. There's still going to be free apps. That's not changing. Um, very similar to what they are today. Um, the quotas are going to, be, uh, are going to go down somewhat. Um, on those free apps. But again, the goal is you should be able to run um, an app on App Engine for free forever. Paid apps are actually similar to what we have today in terms of apps that have billing enabled. In other words, you can pay for scaling on paid apps. Um, they do cost $9 per month um, in addition to the usage, uh, but that also now includes an SLA. Um, and then lastly, there's, there are premier accounts. And this is $500 per account per month um, in addition to the usage you, you use, but this includes operational support. Again, um, operational support is really important because one of the pieces of feedback we get from our customers is they, they like what we built, they want to use it, and the two major pieces of feedback we often get are, we don't want it to go away. Um, and in fact, when we talk to a number of our customers about, this, uh, about leaving preview, we sent them an email and said, hey, we have something we want to talk to you about. Then we got on the phone, and they were like, don't tell us App Engine's being canceled. Yeah, that was the. <laughs> and uh, we didn't. We told them we were leaving preview, which everyone was much more excited about. Yeah. Um, I was probably partially at fault for that. I kind of have an important announcement that we need to talk with you very soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Doom and gloom. Um, but uh, but um, the, the second thing that we constantly hear from our customers um, is they want to be able to have a guaranteed response time from someone within Google to be able to answer questions, um, especially if there's, um, if there's operational issues, uh, potential downtime on their application that they don't understand. They want to be able to ask somebody a question and get a guaranteed response. And, and I can probably highlight that a little bit, because obviously if you work with App Engine, you have the forums, but then sometimes you're lucky enough, like some key people here, that know some people's email addresses. And so for those guys, we've been actually pretty good, but we actually feel guilty because there's thousands of people out there that we obviously just can't cover from our own you know, sheer number of hours per day. And so we're really happy that we're actually putting this program together and, and launching it for a full operational support that it should be. So. Indeed. And, and in fact, th this operational support program is currently in Trusted Tester today. Yeah. Um, the other thing you get with Premier Accounts, I should mention, is as many apps as you want and all of them can scale and you don't pay per app fees for those. Um, second big change, no more CPU hours. I know CPU hours uh, were, were elegant in their simplicity. Um, unfortunately, they did have a downside in terms of people who were trying to do memory intensive applications um, or, or people who had applications that just had very high latency. Um, we didn't necessarily know how to tackle some of these applications because essentially all we did is charge for CPU. 
Um, so we're, instead, we're going to be charging for size and number of running front ends and back ends. And this incorpor incorporates CPU and memory, as I spoke about before. Um, so essentially, any time your code is running, um, we're going to be charging for, for the size. Um, APIs, which today we're charging CPU hours for, instead we're going to actually be just charging based on the operations themselves. So if you're using the channel API, and, um, and you, uh, you open up 10 channels. We charge you for 10 channels opened. Um, we will charge you for 10 channels open today. If you open up 10 channels, we translate that into the CPU that it takes us and then charge you for that CPU. Um, part of the reason we did this was because we wanted a much more transparent way for people to estimate what their actual bills would be. Um, and as we get, uh, there's, um, with the blog post that Chris mentioned today, there's a, there's a detailed list of the operations and the cost for those. Um, and as we get closer and closer to leaving preview, more information will be available about some of those. And then the last thing is add-ons. Um, I say, for example, SSL for custom domains will be available for a monthly fee um, because we know that this is a very, very um, heavily desired feature for App Engine. People tell us this every day. Yep. Um, and we're, we're working on it every day. Um, it, it's, it's, in fact, one of our top priorities to work on. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a specific date that we can say when, it'll, when, when it will launch. Um, that being said, when it is launched, it'll be available for a monthly fee, partially because it uses a resource, IP addresses, um, that, is, that, that we can't just sort of pay usage-based. Um, that being said, we heard loud and clear that people love usage-based model, and so that's why um, everything else uh, is, is going to be usage-based. So this is a list of the prices we have. One of the things that I, um, or excuse me, the prices we will have once we leave preview. Right. One of the things that I should mention are reserved instances. And so um, reserved instances, it's, it's actually pre-reserving a number of instance hours that you will use in a week. It's not reserving the instances themselves, if that makes sense. Um, I also wanted to highlight data store storage, um, which we're actually lowering the high replication data store price from, um, from 45 cents where it was before down to 24 cents today. Um, so if you log into your admin console um, today, you, you'll see that price has gone down if you're using high repl replication data store. Um, uh, and that, as well as us um, setting it as default today, it just shows our commitment to it. All right, so Chris, cool. what's going on with App Engine for Business? So if you actually did see the blog post and actually went over to the uh, App Engine URL that we've had, App Engine for Business URL that we've had for about a year now, you'll see that it's kind of uh, disappearing. So to give you the, the, long, the, the short story, I guess, um, when we launched it, essentially we announced, well, I should say, when we announced that App Engine for Business was going to be entering a preview period, uh, we, we basically embarked on a, a fairly long trusted tester uh, phase. And so as we started rolling out the features, I was actually in charge of getting together a very large audience of trusted testers out there uh, to provide feedback. And probably, um, obviously, you know, the features that we you know, plan to put out there are still very popular. People were very interested in the core features. But as we got into kind of like getting uh, the core feedback, we found that there were definitely some things that we needed to kind of address. Um, we, we obviously just found out that people, they want the features themselves. They don't necessarily want to kind of fit in to what we had actually projected earlier for the overall App Engine for Business model, meaning that it was kind of a, a, a segmentation or a special class of App Engine, whereas what we're announcing today, it's all the same. It's just App Engine. So as we launched the Trusted Tester program, uh, we had our hundreds of developers. They were you know, trying it out. We signed them up for early preview to some of the programs. We ran some external workshops, had people give us feedback. And so what we were finding, essentially, was that um, the, the App Engine for Business model um, was a little bit restrictive for some of our, 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 our testers. Not all companies were essentially focused on building internal apps. And that was what the original thinking was with App Engine for Business. And uh, we also found that uh, many of our, our trusted testers were not necessarily, um, we found that the per user per app pricing was not necessarily compatible with their usage pattern. Um, we also noticed like even companies that were not uh, officially part of our um, App Engine for Business Trusted Tester program, they ended up kind of becoming a trusted tester by uh, 
the necessity of, say, having an SLA, for example. So we actually had to kind of modify what we were doing to, to work out with some of our key trusted testers. All in all, that provided some great feedback. This feedback was fed right directly back into our overall strategic um, you know, directions for App Engine, and, and, and here we are today, essentially announcing what we're doing with the, uh, the leaving the preview and, of course, keeping the core, uh, very popular aspects of App Engine for Business, the SLA support, hosted SQL, all that kind of stuff, but just making it available for anyone. And, of course, anyone can do it as long as they go ahead and, and uh, you know, choose which, what uh, app model they want to, to use for. So what does this mean for customers? Obviously, the, the timing, uh, as, as Greg mentioned as well, the timing is, so, it's, so for you guys, you don't have to worry anything about right now. It's going to be down the road, sometimes the latter part of the year. Um, we do have a new terms of service for you guys to work through. And of course, the pricing is something that, that uh, you'll, you'll have to look into a little bit more closely. We are going to have a tool that will allow you to have essentially on the fly comparative bills. So you can see what it was before and then what it's going to be. Um, so we're basically working out to help all the existing customers to understand what essentially um, what it's going to mean from them. And, and mainly just to kind of facilitate or make sure that it's, uh, it's not that big of a change for you guys. And, and we're definitely counting on the fact that you guys are going to benefit from all the, the additional features and, and the SLA and so forth. I think you One of the things I should mention is the reason we haven't um, we're not showing comparative bills today is because now that we're going to be billing based on instance hours, um, our scheduler, which decides how right. many instances you're running, is, right. becomes a, a, a much more critical um, aspect of your bill. Um, it also means that, uh, that we need to optimize our scheduler around ensuring that your instances are being used effectively. And so part of the reason we're not showing you what your new bill is going to be today is because we're still in the process of changing our scheduler around to make sure that we're using instances more efficiently so that you're only paying for what you ac actually need. Yeah. And this change also helps you be more efficient on your side as well. So, I mean, we're obviously fixing the, the, the infrastructure to, to guide you in that way, but you can also benefit from it as well. All right. So at this point, uh, to kind of explain um, some of our, you know, key trusted testers and allow them to kind of, uh, you know, describe in their own words, you know, what the experience has been with App Engine and also what they think moving forward, what this direction is going to, you know, have for them, we'd like to invite Dan Murray. Our co-founder and managing director at Web Filings. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Thanks, well, uh, before I dive into this and talk about uh, GAE uh, and uh, what GAE's been for us and how excited we are about uh, the direction the uh, you know, App Engine is taking over the course of the next year here, I will talk a little bit about our company and what we do so you can put this in context. What uh, Web Filings does, we uh, build collaborative software that helps uh, financial reporting teams in public companies to streamline the process of submitting and filing their uh, financial reports with the SEC. This is a process that uh, every public company goes through, about uh, 10,000 companies in the U.S. that do this, uh, and they have to do it every quarter. It's a really challenging process, uh, something that uh, these uh, companies have struggled with for decades using uh, more traditional word processing and spreadsheet applications, put it that way. Um, and what we've done is, uh, you know, we've really looked carefully at that uh, space, look at the market, and looked at uh, the problems they have with collaborating, um, the problems that they have with uh, just updating complex documents that have a lot of repeated information. And we've built a, a collaborative solution that really um, binds the entire reporting team and, and other members of the company together and for them to collaborate and really um, reduce the amount of time it takes to uh, produce these reports. In fact, uh, we've managed to cut, uh, in some cases, 20 days off the time it takes to file. Um, we have uh, many companies that uh, we brought up over the past several years, uh, or past few years, and just in the past year, we've gone from, I think, zero to uh, several hundred companies in uh, a very short amount of time. And App Engine. We started on App Engine, and uh, really, I think we started looking at it in, uh, right after it came out in April 2008. Um, I remember we got uh, several web filings developers here in the audience, and uh, we, uh, several of us, drove to uh, Bozeman and taught ourselves Python and taught ourselves uh, App Engine in the drive on the way there. And uh, App Engine, we selected for the, its ability to scale, and also uh, with our customers, they're very sensitive about the uh, security of information. 
And so we looked at Google and uh, the, how, ser how seriously Google takes uh, security and the underpinnings and security in depth that App Engine practices and really felt that it was the right uh, platform for us. And again, it's helped us scale just over the past year from zero to several, several hundred customers. And uh, I think we've gone from 30 to 180 people with, I don't know, close to 60 developers all developing and you know, deploying new apps with a very agile method um, you know, every few weeks. I hope you don't mind. I just want to say that ahead. when we invited you guys over to share your technology with our overall team, um, we were just completely blown away by how the rich aspects of your application. So it's a really awesome application, and I think you know, hats, you know, hats off for you guys. And obviously, you guys have had a tra great track record with your Fortune 100 uh, companies that you are now using your technology. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll just mention real quick that we have companies like uh, eBay, Sprint, Valero Energy, United Airlines, and many other Fortune 100 companies that are using our product every single day. And like I said, we were you know, GA-based from, you know, from the very beginning, and it's really simplified our approach to development. Uh, we've been able to focus on innovation for the market that we serve, uh, rather than on managing the infrastructure. And it's really you know, done great things to support agile development. I've been doing uh, software development for over 20 years, and I can tell you I've struggled with uh, a lot of different platforms, and this one has, uh, you know, can't tell you that we haven't had our, our bumps along the road, but they're minor in comparison to uh, anything that I had experienced before then. Um, some of the things that we're, we're very excited about uh, with App Engine um, is, are the, the new features. And you know, I really wish that we had the, uh, the back end a few years ago when we started, but uh, we're going to make uh, very good use of that very soon. Uh, we've had to take different approaches to uh, long running processes, and this is, so this is a, a really welcome, um, welcome new feature. And then, you know, we uh, actually, uh, with our customers, reliability is very, very important. I mean, we've got to be up. We've got to be up 24-7. Uh, and since we've made the switch, and Chris and uh, uh, Ikai Lan and uh, several others that, uh, on the App Engine team really helped us out uh, with the migration to HRD, and since we've made that move to HRD, we've actually experienced 100% uh, uptime. And so it's been uh, really wonderful for our business. And you know, we, our stress level our company uh, is you know, nice and even. Uh, as a result, our customer support calls don't relate to the uh, stability, reliability of the platform at all. They're really more helping them solve their financial reporting problems. And then, of course, we're, we're excited about the expanded support. And uh, really, the three-year deprecation and the move out of the preview is uh, just validation of the choice we made and the fact that we bet our business on App Engine uh, three years ago. And uh, you know, we've taken a hard look and worked with uh, Chris and Greg and crew on the uh, pricing model. And uh, really, from our perspective, the cost value benefit is, is there. And we don't, uh, you know, it, it fits our business model. And so we see the pricing changes really as more uh, validation. And we're excited because Google's really getting behind this and putting a lot into uh, Google App Engine's growth and development. Cool. Well, thanks very much. Thanks. Uh, there you go. Hear it from Dan. He's uh, quite happy. <laughs> so for uh, a next partner that I want to bring up to the stage is uh, Matt Fowler. And he's actually from JBill. And uh, he was also one of our um, trusted testers who actually came on site. We had a workshop back in November, and he provided some really excellent feedback that actually helped us guide App Engine to where we are here today. So here you go. So, feel free. Uh, so uh, my name is Matt Fowler. I'm a systems engineer with uh, the global IT architecture team at Jable Circuit. Um, just real quick, Jable, um, we're a contract electronics manufacturing company. Uh, we've got about 85,000 employees, and uh, last year we did over 13 billion in revenue. Um, we are also a Google Apps customer. We uh, have about 40,000 licenses, um, and um, you know we started using the App Engine platform after we began uh, transitioning over to uh, Google Apps. So um, you know it was just kind of a, a natural extension of the the rest of the platform. Um, you know the uh, we have Java developers on staff, uh, so being able to develop in, uh, in a language they were already familiar with was a huge plus. Um, you know, uh, up to this point, um, you know, some of the things that we really like about App Engine, um, it kind of simplifies development. Um, you know, a typical development cycle, you've got, 
you know, different infrastructure to support, you know, you know, dev, you know, dev work, uh, QA or testing, uh, and then uh, the move to production. Uh, with App Engine uh, and the versioning and uh, the way the data store is set up, you can actually, within one app instance, have multiple versions. You know, developers can get their own, their own, uh, you know, section of that app. Um, and so, uh, it, it makes it simple to to promote those different versions into production. Uh, you just, you know, you can follow the same the same patterns that you, you use uh, today for other tools, but uh, it's just a little bit easier to manage. Uh, to manage. Um, you know, the uh, the scaling of App Engine, you know, the built-in ability to to scale up uh, as you uh, roll out to more users, or uh, you add, uh, you know, additional. Uh, Additional functionality that opens up, you know, additional use cases internally. Um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about getting additional additional servers in place, additional network connections in place. You, uh, you know, as long as they have a decent connection to the internet, um, you know, the, you get the scaling built in. Um, as Chris mentioned, we uh, we participated in the App Engine for Business uh, Trusted Tester Program. Uh, I was here at I/O last year and. Uh, after that announcement, I, I signed up uh, just about immediately. Um, it was uh, something that we, you know, we definitely wanted to, to look at, um, and and some of the stuff added by the uh, the business offering uh, really enabled us to be able to to get into it. Um, you know, over the course of the participation in the uh, in the trusted tester program, we uh, you know we looked at the original pricing model, which was. Uh, you know, per user uh, per month, which for us didn't really work that well. Um, you know, we we really wanted the uh, the utilization and uh, you know uh, tracking cost by utilization. And yeah, I, me uh, I remember you had mentioned you had like thousands of people on the shop floor, right? And yeah. So it just wouldn't work out for you guys in that sense, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, so uh, you know, the team took that into account uh, with the uh, with the new new pricing model. Um, you know, also the. Uh, the, during the trusted tester uh, phase for the, the business product, um, authentication was locked to a single Google Apps domain, and um, you know we uh, we needed the ability to have other domains access the applications we had developed. So that was uh, another item that uh, right, right. we fed back. Um, so with uh, today's announcements. Um, you know, we uh, we've got a lot of new a new a lot of new stuff to look at. Uh, we're we're pretty excited about new functionality in the platform. Um, we have some development groups that that you know are, are looking at the at using this to uh, kind of augment what what they've already done, and definitely uh, some of the changes here are going to enable them to to move into that. Um, taking the preview label off uh, kind of adds a, a level of comfort to uh, people who are. You know, just now getting ready to uh, to start getting familiar with the platform. Uh, even internally, we have groups that, that you know haven't haven't looked at it yet, um, and they were kind of hesitant too because it was considered preview. They weren't sure if it was gonna gonna be here, but uh, definitely uh, with today's announcement, you know, the commitments there. Um, you know, operational support and SLA that's very important for us. Um, you know, our internal support is you know 24/7. You know, we have follow the sun support internally, um, and being able to to have uh, the ability to push back, you know, and escalate issues, uh, you know, through operational support is, is definitely something that, that we would want for uh, for this as well. Um, the hosted SQL um, that's that's important for us as well. Most of our applications internally um, use relational databases, um, and adding relational uh, database support to the App Engine platform would uh, allow our users to, uh, or our developers to more easily transition those apps um, over to uh, the App Engine platform. Um, you know, a lot of our developers are, are more experienced with relational databases um, and moving to a non-relational model, you know, you kind of have to, to re redo some code and, you know, re-architect some apps. Um, the, uh, the new cost model, you know, it definitely allows us to uh, to better forecast the cost based on utilization. Um, you know, and, and as we look to scale up, you know, we can kind of do those calculations internally before we do it and uh, plan on what we're going to be uh, what we're going to be spending. 
and uh, the centralized billing and invoicing, that's, uh, that's definitely something we were looking for. Um, you know, now we can uh, get all the costs, you know, invoiced to us rather than having credit cards on file. So, uh, Cool, yeah, I'd like to, you know, obviously when we had our discussions and as we were, you know, briefing you on um, essentially the new direction, it was such a, uh, such a relief to see also that you guys were really jumping on board at, as well as Dan and uh, a very, had a very positive um, feedback with regards to the direction. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and summarize really quickly and then we're going to switch over into like a Q&A mode. So, um, and you might want to grab that mic just in case. Um, but. All in short, just to summarize, Greg and I are both, you know, super excited. The entire App Engine team, which you see him right here, <laughs> uh, are very excited as well to leave preview. Um, you know, and, and I think probably the biggest thing is that, you know, not just the, uh, a focused, uh, a core set of people, but really anyone can take advantage of the upcoming features. And, and, you know, it's not, you know, just this one particular class of people. And I think probably the biggest thing is obviously App Engine is locked in. It's here to stay. You can definitely bank on it. Enterprise companies can really put that down as, you know, a, a major cause for why, you know, they can go ahead and move ahead with App Engine in, in enterprise scenarios. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch over into... Our, obviously, there's our uh, information as well that you want to uh, keep handy, but let's go ahead and switch into Q&A mode. And it looks like we have two microphones. We have one over there, and it looks like we have a few questions queuing up, and then this one over here is still open. So I'll go ahead and act as MC. Uh, so feel free to jump in and ask questions now. What is the best practice that you would recommend for backing up your data from your applications and data that's stored in the data store on App Engine? So from backing up in general, or? Back as, yeah. You want, yeah, it, it's a, the best practice. I don't know. What would you guys have any particular one that you would say? That, just, yeah. Yeah. So MapReduce library, in case you can't hear them. Would, yeah. MapReduce to Blob Store, I guess, is what you're using. Um, one of the things, uh, just uh, as, a, uh, as an aside on that question, um, we've heard loud and clear that, that backup and uh, restore is a, a very much needed feature of App Engine. And so we've heard that, and, and it's, we've added it to our, our list of things to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, let's go on the left side. Yes. I have uh, two security questions. Uh, remember back um, in uh, Google Apps for Business, uh, you had a secure VPN back into the enterprise for local data. I was wondering if uh, that's still a part of the new release. Um, absolutely. So that, that, that is indeed still available. Um, there are, uh, we're, we're in the process of working on potentially other ways to connect back to your on-premise. Um, but, but secure data connector, which is specifically the thing you're referring to, is, is indeed still available and available um, for, uh, for uh, paid users to use. My next question is uh, for uh, Google Apps for government or federal government users. Um, does the new release um, take advantage of any of the sort of security, higher security standards required uh, like from FISMA and the additional um, uh, CONUS requirements for keeping your data within the data centers in the United States? Well, does uh, uh, Google Apps have, or App Engine um, have those uh, uh, boundaries for federal customers? Um, so we, we don't currently have, uh, or I'm sorry, we're not currently announcing additional um, certification. Uh, I believe. We're on track for like, like some of the steps in progress, like, right. know, like SAS 70, for example. Exactly. SAS 70 is in progress, and I believe it's FISMA. Level one is in progress. I'm trying to get a, a head nod from. All right, FISMA level one is in progress. That was a good enough nod. Um, um, so we're not we're not announcing um, a, any additional uh, um, uh, additional um, compliance with this launch. It is one of the things that we know again is very necessary for government customers and, and enterprises in general. And so we are working on better what, One thing that we actually have been doing, and Dan can, can, can chime in, is uh, even though um, we're, for example, the option 
core product is on track for SAS 70 uh, Type 2 certification, I believe. Um, we also go through and have helped some uh, specific you know, enterprise customers uh, with their security aud audits. And so, for example, Dan, we've had numerous, like, uh, we would provide you white papers. We provide you essentially access to, to a lot of our security staff to go over some of these things if you want. Yeah, I mean, we've had to, this one. Yeah, you're good. We've had to complete uh, you know, BitSig questionnaires and uh, work with uh, IT security teams from some of the largest companies in the world. And uh, you know, Google's been very supportive of that by providing, as Chris said, the material and being able to answer questions. But at the same time, uh, you know, we take an approach of you know, making sure that you know, we have appropriate and uh, uh, security processes and uh, standards and uh, really black box uh, what Google does so that the boundaries are well defined. And that's really key to, I think, successful uh, success with security audits. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Question over here. With regards to the pricing model, what exactly qualifies as a data store operation? Or put differently, what exactly do I get for my one ten thousandth of a cent? <laughs> um, that is a really good question, um, and it's one of the details uh, that uh, that we're still um, working through the, the precise definition of what that operation means. So that's one of the things that we're, we'll be talking more about in the coming weeks. Question on this? I'm curious for the two companies. Have you built the model for the new pricing structure? And are you willing to share whether that model, based on existing use of your apps, does that say that you are going to stay at your current cost for infrastructure, or is it going up or going down? Um, so uh, we have a, a spreadsheet that we put together uh, internally um, that uh, you know we could punch in some of the statistics for you know the, pr the past you know couple months of, of utilization for uh, well this was for, for one specific app that we had. Um, and you know we've we've tweaked it to account for the change you know from from a, a per CPU utilization to you know per per you know instance hour really or per instance you know that's online. Um, but uh, you know it, for for some of our apps you, you know compared to the original pricing model for the App Engine for Business, these costs would be lower. But uh, you know the uh, the cost for um, we have a couple apps that, that take advantage of some of these more specialized APIs um, that the billing is being changed on. Um, for example, the uh, the XMPP. Um, those may change, but overall, the there's not that much of a difference for us. Yeah, I, we have a spreadsheet that we run to and uh, looked at this pretty closely. You know, really, uh, for our application, compared to what we would pay through other providers, I mean, we're, we're you know it's considerably less. Uh, price going to go up? Yeah, it's going it's to cost us more money to do it, but compared to the value we get, uh, it's really not significant. And I know the question wasn't directed at me, but uh, I, I think, you know, to, to be uh, straightforward and clear, um, it, it likely will be more expensive for most customers. Um, we're, not, we're not doing this as a way to, to make App Engine cheaper. Um, we're, making it as a, we're, we're doing the pricing change as a way to, to make pricing both more transparent, but also to, to price it for, for the value of the offering that our customers are getting. So most, most customers will see uh, some increase in price. It, it essentially allows us to lock it in long term. So it's a sustain, sustainable uh, pricing model. No, that's fair. So I, that's the first time I'd actually seen that matrix. And talking about XMP brings up another question. Sorry, it's so one more thing. It, was that a typo, or did, did the, the number of emails per day, does that really go from 2,000 down to 100? Uh, yes. So the number of emails per day has actually changed um, from 2,000 down to 100. And that effect is taking, taking place immediately. Um, we're doing that uh, to ensure everyone is using the API appropriately. Is there if, a whitelisting program, though, that you can um, sorry, free emails. Yeah, yeah, this is for free emails. Okay. You, can, you, can still, you can still pay for more, but right. The number of free ones, um, as you can imagine, a lot of people saw 2,000 free emails per app yeah. per day as a, as a way to take advantage of the yeah. program. Right, so price only really punishes the good guys, right? It doesn't fix the problem. Um, we can talk afterwards. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Question on the right? Yeah. Three years at the all-out app engine level, technology level, or an API call level? 
Okay, so the deprecation is, um, it can be at any of those levels. So if there's a specific API that we're deprecating and saying that we are no longer developing on, we'll, we'll be very explicit that this is now being deprecated, we're no longer going to continue development, and then that's when the clock starts for the three years. Um, it is possible, let's say in some, some future crazy world, that App Engine um, that, that Google stops development of App Engine, then App Engine itself will, will be under that deprecation policy as well. So it, it's, it's at all levels of the stack, but essentially will explicitly say X is being deprecated, and that starts the three-year clock. Okay, that was my, my big question around the API level. If you change the way that a method call works, it might break my app, and how long do I have to actually fix that? Um, so it sounds like three years. Uh, so, so it, 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 yes, for, well, that's for, depre that's for deprecated, um, full APIs. In terms of versions, we're going to be, uh, there's a deprecation policy for major versions. Um, so it, it's, it's hard to tell exactly um, from, from your question if like there's a, there's a specific area you're worried about. But, but it's going to be major versions, the whole product, and, and whole APIs that are being sure. under the policy. I think like, so the specific issue is I've got an app that's running on version 1.x. Mm -hmm. Version uh, 2.0 comes out, and the API actually changes, which means the question is, does that automatically shift forward? And if it does, then it breaks my app. So how much time do you give me before I have to make that change? Um, so uh, so if, if, we're adding, um, if we're adding a new API, that doesn't sort of start the clock for deprecation, as long as the old, the old one's supported. And I believe we're still supporting old APIs for, yeah, I was gonna say. Right. You guys get that uh, in the back of the audience? No. Oh, okay. Um, just, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I can repeat what Max said. Yeah. Um, what, what Max said was essentially um, the way our APIs work is we don't make backwards incompatible changes. Um, and so if we did make a backwards incompatible change, that would fall under the three-year deprecation cycle. But currently, we, we don't and haven't been making those. The other question I had was a lot of enterprises are .NET and Java shops. So .NET or C sharp, for example, is an ECMA standard. Any thoughts on whether you guys would support that? I was really surprised that you supported Go versus something that was more mainstream in the enterprise. Um, so, so uh, frankly, we're, we're, we're looking at a number of different run times to be able to support. Um, we don't have any additional ones that we can talk about or announce today. Um, Go was the one that it was ready for us to talk about and announce today. Gotcha. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Uh, so at, at last year's I.O., the, the big app engine for business bombshell was SQL, relational databases for App Engine. I didn't hear very much about that today. I didn't see any pricing for it. So from Google, I'd like to hear where are we with hosted SQL? And from JBill, uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, your experience with it. Uh, response time, uh, reliability, so how it compares to an on-site SQL database. Yeah, so I, I was just going to say that, um, yeah, we're, we're still in trusted tester mode. We have like a number of people out there that are, that are trying it out. I don't believe we actually locked down specific pricing. Um, so, so remember how I mentioned earlier that SSL is one of our top priorities? As you might imagine, SQL is one of our other top priorities. Um, we are working hard on it. Uh, we don't have a specific release date that we can state yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, but we're absolutely working on it, and as Chris mentioned, we have trusted yeah. testers. And, and today. anyone is you know just let me know, or you can like there's an online form you can you can request access and then essentially be set up, and then you can turn on your instance and start using it. Um, also, just it, it is MySQL compatible, so it's essentially the um, flavor of SQL, essentially MySQL. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So if you want to try it out, definitely welcome to try it out. And did you have any further to add on the MySQL on the SQL part? Uh, yeah, so with, with regard to the difference between the hosted SQL and on-premise, um, with the, the tools that have been made available so far under the Trusted Tester program, they, uh, they make it very easy to work with. Uh, you know, you have... I, get, I mean, it's I, basically I, in, embedded to, in, yeah. the, in the SDK. So. I'm talking about here, yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah so, it, you know, there's command line access to the SQL environment, right. and it is MySQL compatible, so it's... it's it's very easy to work with. And your experience with its reliability and response time? 
Uh, yeah, so far uh, we haven't encountered you know any any major issues, but you know it, it is still in development. So yeah, yeah. And, and we'd encourage you to join the trust yeah, Tesla program if you want to. Definitely check it looking out. for a good feedback or just feedback in general. <laughs> cool. uh, question on the right. So uh, my question has to do with the algorithm for determining what priority to give a particular app or an own app engine, and the reason I'm interested in that is because. The app that I'm currently running that I'm considering moving to App Engine is something that's event-based, meaning there's very little traffic for a long period of time until June 18th shows up or whatever that event deadline is, and all of a sudden it just spikes. And will the App Engine algorithm, is it responsive to that? And then a related question is, was the Google I.O. registration system running on App Engine? <laughs> um, I can't comment on that, but I, I, I can. <laughs> Some of our slides that we do when I do, like, I, I regularly give overviews. Uh, we do cite some of our partners. Uh, even one of our slides today, the, the Royal Wedding, where you get this shoot up. Um, so App Engine is specifically geared to handle those types of things. It's but, not, go ahead. For the Royal Wedding, though, I would imagine that it, it didn't really shoot up. It just went up kind of over a week's time or two weeks' time. You'd be surprised. It, like, on the day of, it just sort of shot yeah. up. That's like, what I'm wondering about. So it's able to yeah, and right Absolutely. during the, the kiss, you know, those little key moments. Uh, Gigya uh, is a partner of ours. They, they have uh, sporting, a lot of events that, you know, that they'll shoot up in traffic and then very quickly just drop right back down. And that's one of the key strengths of, of App Engine and, and that we have been touting for a long time. And, and, and you only pay for that traffic, right? So when yeah. it shoots up, you pay for that spike it's in usage, like and then when it goes down to nothing, you, you, you're, you're gonna locked know up there. If that traffic's gonna happen, can I somehow give you some indicator to say, ramp up, prepare to ramp up for this, or force it to instantiate more or something? So without going into too much detail, so the, the scheduler doesn't sort of um, prioritize applications against each other um, in any visible way, so to speak. Um, what it does do, though, is it, it, based on the number of requests coming in, it figures out how many instances that you should have for that traffic. Um, one of the things that we're doing in, in our work on the scheduler now is essentially allowing you to, to tweak that, to basically say, I want applications to spin up very, very quickly as soon as traffic is coming in. And that's, I, I think that's essentially what you're asking for, is the ability to do that so that you can say, I know there's going to be a lot of traffic tomorrow, so I'm going to turn the scheduler up to make sure that we're spinning, you're spinning up instances quickly. Yeah, good. And you're not going to answer my other question, though. Oh, what was the other one? Was Google I.O. I was probably oh. the only one that had problems getting um, into the so, system. Does anybody else have problems so, so the session feedback, the speaker feedback system is running on App Engine. Yeah. But the registration, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, was, well, not, what? No, was the, not, the right? IO? Yeah, that's right, because I remember, oh, anyway, <laughs> some internal discussions about that. Hey, so. Chris, I'll jump in here real quick. Uh, just as part of the, the spikes you're talking about, uh, that's something that we experience quite a bit with our customers. We have uh, these oh, yeah. crunch times that where uh, many, many companies are trying to file their 10 Qs and 10 Ks at once. And uh, you know we've experienced pretty smooth scaling uh, with respect to App Engine, but there are a couple guys sitting here in the front row, uh, Dave Tucker and uh, Mike Wesner, who are experts from our company on this and have done a lot of statistical analysis and looking at the graphs and charts. So I'd encourage you to talk with them to learn a little bit more about what we've, we've experienced. Cool. There you go. So uh, for those of us who started on the App Engine early and have a lot of data and know the store, I want to switch to the higher application data store. Are you guys finding any tools to make it easier? Absolutely. We're, uh, we're currently working on tools to make that easier. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's anything we can talk about today. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. It's a little bit manual right now, but yeah, definitely. We, we hear you on that one. And thank you for being around from early on. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Good to see you again. Uh, on the right. Domain names for the AppSpot.com is uh, we have our, our company name has basically been taken and used in a bunch of things that aren't that are just hanging out there. And I just wonder is any way you could or has anyone ever talked about setting up something either reserving names or to request getting something back? So like we have the Liberty Fund. Somebody has a Liberty Fund on AppSpot.com, which would be great. I think would handle some of the SSL needs for us, but I can't get that one back from anyone. Um, so, so if if that is a, a trademarked name, yeah. um, uh, 
Let's talk afterwards. I think, I think trade, in general, trademark infringement is something that, that we have to tackle on a sort of case-by-case -case basis. Okay. It was more like, if, you know, like after 90 days, and they haven't, they're not actually running anything on it and so forth. Some way we could ask for it, at the very least, be able to ask for the name yeah, in, that makes in, sense. in general, no, but it, for again, specifically for trademark infringement cases, we could talk. Yeah. So about a minute left, but go ahead. That's good. And I just have a quick question. Yeah. What's going to happen with the always on instances with the paid apps? I noticed it's both nine dollars, so I didn't know if that's. We're we're still working on determining exactly how always is on is going to work under the new model. We we understand that it's um, the the usefulness of it um, and. We're, we're working to, f to, to sort of fit it in under the new pricing model. Cool. So anyway, so it looks like we're uh, coming to the end of our session here. I want to thank you guys, especially, for sticking around and uh, asking a lot of great questions. I also want to thank our guests, uh, Dan from WebFinds and Matt from JBill, and of course, Greg as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.